a robotic remote-controlled drone loaded with explosives flew 700 miles or 1,126 kilometers to the Russian Caspian Fleet dock in Dagestan, where it hit three ships at once. Forbes reported, this drone crashed into a cluster of warships moored near the pier. The 700-mile raid isn't the deepest strike by Ukraine's A-22 drones, but it's close. Back in May, one of the 100-mile-per-hour drones struck an oil refinery in the city of Salavat in Russia, more than 800 miles from the front line. According to Anton Herashchenko, a former advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, three ships were damaged by the explosion, including two Gepard-class frigates, the largest ships of the fleet, as well as a smaller Buyan corvette. Damaged vessels can make up almost a third of the Caspian fleet. The A-22 drone that was struck was designed to respond to Russian strikes on Ukrainian cities and bases, in particular with a number of locally produced drones and surface-to-air missiles configured for ground strikes. The humming of the A-22 over the anchorage of the Caspian fleet emphasizes how quickly Ukraine has moved to expand its range of weapons of deep destruction of local production. The article reads, Journalists recall that in February 2022, Ukraine did not have a single long-range weapon and now there are several types of them. In order to retaliate against Russia's own strikes on Ukrainian cities and bases, the Ukrainians have had to improvise with an array of locally made drones and surface-to-air missiles tweaked for ground strikes. Now, three months before Trump re-enters the White House, that improvisation could assume even greater importance. Right now, there is a lot of uncertainty about Trump's impact on the Ukraine war, wrote Samuel Ramani, a professor of international relations at Oxford University. But if Trump does as Republicans have threatened to do and cuts Ukraine off from U.S. aid, Ukraine will still have ways of prosecuting its war of survival. The authors of the article also mentioned that Ukraine has recently completed the development of a missile drone with a Palyanitsia turbojet engine, a hybrid cruise missile with a range of up to 400 miles. It's not as far as the A-22 drone flies, but where drones for sports aircraft are made manually in small quantities based on existing gliders, Palyanitsa can be mass-produced from scratch by the Ukrainian drone industry, which is developing the material red. Since the beginning of 2024, the Ukrainian armed forces have destroyed and disabled 3,171 tanks of the Russian army, according to a statement by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense. A tank battalion consists of 31 tanks. Therefore, Ukrainian forces have eliminated 102 tank battalions of the Russian Federation over the course of 10 months. The Ministry of Defense reported that May the 12th, 2024, became a sort of day of tank men for the Russians this year, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that on that day, Ukraine struck 31 enemy tanks, an entire battalion. Such losses could cost the Russian budget at least $9 billion. This figure is based on average global prices for armored vehicles. $9 billion is roughly equivalent to 16 annual budgets of the city of Chelyabinsk, which has the worst ecological situation in Russia. Meanwhile, Instead of addressing internal social issues, the leadership of the aggressor state continues to pour huge sums into the war, Ukraine's Ministry of Defense stated. According to data from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Russian army has lost more than 9,200 of its tanks. At the start of the full-scale invasion, Russia was estimated to have around 3,300 operational tanks, suggesting that all those that initially drove into Ukraine and then some have been taken out over the course of two and a half years. It's impossible to know for certain exactly how many tanks Russia has lost during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, so any figures need to be treated as estimates. Further complicating matters is what exactly Ukraine's general staff counts as a tank, with Ukraine's official count being plausible, yet most likely misleading. 
The daily figures from Kyiv just say tanks, but because it has a separate section for armoured personnel vehicles, so it's my interpretation that they group main battle tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. Sashka Brushman, visiting research fellow for defence and military analysis at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, told. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, having become embroiled in a war of attrition in Ukraine, has found himself in a trap. On the one hand, he urgently needs a new mobilization to continue the aggression. On the other, he has no resources for it. This was reported by the Russian associate of the Czechist Igor Strelkov Z War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov. The propagandist, having visited the combat zone, spoke about the colossal fatigue in the ranks of the Russian occupation forces. The troops are terribly tired now. It's obvious they weren't replaced since then, as they were mobilized. I saw this fatigue, Kalashnikov said. He specified that people need to be replaced with fresh cannon fodder, but the Kremlin is afraid to decide on mobilization. And there are more than enough reasons for this fear. There are no resources for a new recruitment of soldiers. This whole undertaking could turn into a large uprising. If we continue the campaign, the war against Ukraine, then we need to conduct a new mobilization. If we call up 300,000 today, I'm not even talking about 500,000. In this system, it will be impossible to dress or equip them. Am I right? Or am I an extremist? If we cannot supply the active army with everything it needs now, then calling up another 300,000 will be a disaster. They don't want to call up reservists. They are trying to get by with big money, hiring for money. But this is not a solution to the problem. There are too few people. The propagandist said he specified that commanders are literally driving half-treated cripples on crutches to the front due to a colossal shortage of manpower. Recently, Russian MP Alexander Borodai, who stood at the origins of aggression against Ukraine, made a defeatist statement. He complained about problems in the army and the lack of clear goals of the war. Borodai made a bold speech in Moscow at the Congress of the Union of the Russian People's Organization. At the beginning of his speech, he complained that the majority of the population in Russia does not support the so-called SVO and wants it to end as soon as possible. There is a declaration of unity, but we do not have the unity in society. It is not true that it exists. We have very few of those who participate in the SVO in one way or another, somewhere around 5.7 million at most. The rest pretend that this is not their war. You there, hurry up, finish it already, because we are all very tired of this war. This is the position of the majority of society, the Russian deputy said. He also noted the lack of a clear ideology in the Kremlin. Even the top leadership of the Russian Federation does not know what will happen after the war is over.